Hey, hey, everyone. It is Classic Tabletop RPG Friday. So you know what that means. It's time to get back into the Gamma World Series. And we're going to be covering long distance travel. And along the way, I am going to give you some tips on how to integrate that and make it more interesting as well as make it part of the grand adventure. And we're getting ready to do that right now. Thanks for stopping by. If this is your first time, I want to welcome you and I want to welcome all of my elites and my returnees as well. Before we get into the video today, I want to encourage you to go over to the community tab here on RPG Elite where I have posted a new poll. Now, I'm thinking about putting together a mailing list and I'll probably have maybe an article, but I wanted to put a perk in there as well that you can't get here on YouTube, something that is exclusive for those who join the mailing list. So I put a couple of suggestions up and I left some room. So if you don't like any of those suggestions, you can go ahead and put in your own. And I really wanna hear from you on this one. So you can go ahead, click the link in the description below down there, or you could just go right on over to the channel, click on the community tab, and that poll is gonna show up right at the top. I also want to direct your attention to the link that is below that one, which is what RPG Elite is all about. I've seen some comments and I don't think that everyone who comes through here really know what this channel is about. And that video tells you in detail what this is about. It kind of answers the questions that some may have on why I don't cover some things and why I do cover some things. So you can go ahead and click on the link again in the description below and find out what we're about. And that should clear up any confusion. Officially, this channel started August 25th, 2021. I know that it says January of 2019, but up until that point, I mean, I was, it was just a hobby type of thing, but it wasn't until last year that it became more than a hobby. And near the very beginning of this journey, I had decided Fridays were going to be deep dives into classic tabletop RPGs. But in my first series, which is the one we're still on gamma world, I made a boo-boo. I decided it's not going to be a big deal. Let me just cover all four of the editions. Not a good look. <laughs> you want to talk about high stress and making some of these videos because I'm trying to go through every edition to make sure I cover all the points. Oh man. So in this mini series within a series, what we'll do is cover each edition in a separate video. Now, I'm not only going to do it for long distance travel, I'm also going to do it for artifacts because there's a couple other things that are different in every edition. What that means is I may come out with more videos on a different day than my normal Tuesday and Fridays, or I may come out with a video twice in a day. So you don't miss out on any of these. Now is the time. Click that subscribe button, but more importantly, that notification bell so you'll know exactly when because this is going to happen for the next series as well. So this will be around for a minute, but we want to get through Gamma World so we can kind of be on schedule to get to the other games that we want to get to this year. Second edition, Gamma World, long distance travel. Let's go. Long distance travel is the largest type of movement in tabletop RPGs. It's a great opportunity to show off your world and connect it to the grander adventure of your campaign. Now in Gamma World, it represents how far characters can travel in a four hour block of time. It assumes they are on foot since mounts and vehicles are rare and normally are not available until the PCs have a little experience under their belt. That's the type of movement we'll focus on primarily in this series. The distance is measured in kilometers, and you will have to convert it into miles if you are in the US, which is about 0.62 miles or something like that. 
What I suggest is keeping it at kilometers just to make your life simple. First edition calls long distance travel route movement. It suggests a movement of roughly six kilometers per turn or per route movement, but leaves room for the GM to speed that up if the characters are on more of a brisk hike. This is very arbitrary and open in first edition, requiring more legwork on your part to get things nailed down. There is no uniform system of movement. That doesn't come until second edition, which is why we're focusing on that. Now, second edition calls long distance travel march movement. It has a detailed sequence of steps for setting it up. We'll go through those steps and I'll throw in my suggestions and tips along the way. The GM calculates the distance the PCs have to travel to and from their destination. They also note the terrain the PCs must travel through and how or if that will affect their travel. In addition, they determine the full number of days it will take the PCs to complete the journey. Now, this is round trip. This only has to be done one time. A good rule of thumb is to estimate for normal speed of both unburdened and burdened, which we'll cover in a minute. Players won't mind moving burdened and may speed up or slow down depending on what happens during their journey. Exactness is not important. Getting a general idea and being prepared for most of it is what matters. So let me give you an example here. There are four PCs and they have been tasked to get artifacts of the ancients for their community in Haven. And here's Haven right here. Now they must travel northeast to Dayton, which is here. Each hex on the map is 44 kilometers. And there are four hexes between Haven and Dayton if you count them out. One, two, three, four. That is 176 kilometers total. Now, looking at the movement table, the PCs can move 12 kilometers per March turn at normal speed unburdened. So let's switch over to the movement table real quick here so you can see. So here it is. 12 kilometers unburdened normal speed. Burdened is 8 kilometers. Now, let's go back to the region map here. And we can see the terrain is lightly forested, so I'm not going to make any adjustments for that. Give them a break on that. Now, I estimate that they will move at least three March turns per day, which is 36 kilometers unburdened and 24 burdened. And that means it will take them roughly five days unburdened and seven days burdened to get to Dayton. There's 10 days round trip unburdened and 14 days burdened. So armed with a general time frame here, not exact, but general, I'm going to prep for the full 14 days. The GM will roll for each March turn each day. The PCs are on the road to determine whether they will have a random encounter and when there are six March turns per day. This includes the March turns. They are resting for the sake of brevity. I'm going to cover random encounters in a separate video in this series. Now, this would be just for random encounters. This is not for planned encounters. Planned encounters are tied to the main storyline, either directly or indirectly. So it may be a clue. It may be uh, exploration that needs to be done before they get to the main destination. It may be some kind of social connection. Whatever it may be, you can place those wherever you want during the journey so they will have maximum impact for the story and for the session. The PCs need to determine whether they are unburdened, burdened or heavily burdened by adding up the weight of all the gear and weapons they will carry on the journey. The weight of armor worn by a character isn't counted when deciding how much weight they are carrying since it's evenly distributed in second edition. Now, what's the difference between the three? Unburdened are those carrying a weight equal to or less than their physical strength or PS in kilograms. Now, if you want to change this out to pounds, you're going to have to convert that. And that's about 2.2 pounds per kilogram. 
and it's just a whole bunch of decimal stuff that you really don't want to deal with so just keep it in kilograms you'll thank me later burden means that the character is carrying a weight equal to or less than twice their ps and heavily burdened characters are those carrying more than twice their ps but less than three times their ps because three times their ps is the absolute maximum a pc can carry characters can stop and redistribute weight drop equipment to move faster give some equipment to another party member who is stronger or not carrying as much you may have to do this several times during travel depending on what the pcs find so when you are planning make sure you leave a little bit of room so you can find something and bring things back everyone's movement rate is determined by consulting the movement table so let's go back there real quick this table is representative for what pure strain humans humanoids and near human mutated animals will move at remember now in second edition pcs are not allowed to make plant characters and since when i do these deep dives i'm doing it from a purist perspective meaning that i'm going straight from the rules you can change it later if you want but i'm going straight from the rules for these videos also remember the party cannot move faster than its slowest member the players now tell the gm their marching order so that means who's going to go first second third how much distance will separate them if they're in single file or abreast or staggered however you guys are going to do that this can be easily represented on a map with a token in a vtt so i'm going to move the map over a little bit here and this is where you can see how i've set up these four tokens over here to represent how the characters are positioned in their marching order now if you're live you can do this with miniatures or pieces of paper with the character's name on it. I mean, however you want to do it. It's at this time that the players tell the GM the speed they are traveling at as well. So you have three speeds you can travel at, slow, normal, or fast. Characters moving slow are actively scanning the area they pass through for signs of danger and or significance. Maybe it's a movement in the distance or a terrain feature that's out of place. They have a greater chance of noticing such things. Their chances of being surprised is the lowest out of all three of them, but they only move at half of normal speed. Characters moving at normal speed are on alert for danger, but are moving fairly quickly. They are not moving at top speed, but they are also not as likely to be surprised or to overlook some feature of their surroundings as those who are moving fast. Characters moving fast are mainly interested in covering ground, so this is, in effect, a forced march. They move at double normal speed, but they are easier to surprise and will almost always overlook details of the area they are passing through. Next, the players should indicate what route the PCs will follow on the main map. Now, unofficially, you have already figured this out as the GM now the players are officially letting you know now this will normally be on a continent map or country or state even a city some other large region for convenience this can be represented on the main map by a single token or miniature for the whole group let me go ahead and show you the one that i have created for my group here this is the token for the whole group The PCs decide whether they will rest or march during the march turn. So now we are on our way on the journey. For every four march turns, a party marches. They have to rest or sleep for two march turns. Now each character who fails to rest for the required amount of time has their speed, their dexterity, and their physical strength halved. You just drop the fractions on that. Now this is important because if your physical strength is half guess what yes you cannot carry as much as you would before so you want to make sure that your character is getting the proper rest this will stay in play 
until they have rested two full March turns. It's not cumulative, but they have to rest two full March turns in order for them to get rid of any penalties they may have incurred for not resting. Gamma World is a dangerous place and sleeping outside of a base in the wilds and ruins can have detrimental consequences. So if the PCs are stopping to rest, they can inform the GM who will keep watch giving an order of who takes what shifts. Now they're only gonna have to do this one time, normally on their first rest period. Keeping the watch arrangement for the rest of their trip or any journey they go on, adjusting it as needed. The GM narrates what transpires on the March turn, including such things as terrain features, how far they've traveled, weather, etc. Keep it simple and short in terms of your descriptions if nothing of importance is supposed to happen. Do not, and let me repeat this one, do not tempt the players with a rabbit trail they can go down if you're not willing to go the whole nine yards, because trust me, they will take that ball and run with it. Simple and short keeps things moving in the direction you want to keep them moving in. Well, there you have it, folks. Gamma World 2nd Edition Long Distance Travel. If you got some value from this video, go ahead and give a brother some love and hit that like button. No, 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 no. No, don't hit the like button. I want you to smash that like button. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> smash it. Crush it. Give it no mercy. And if you enjoy other videos on this channel, consider subscribing today and hit that notification bell as well. Well, Servant is out of here because like I said, I got a series and I probably need to make more videos on that series so I can come out on different days and all the rest of that. So our brother has just got to fix it. Yeah, yeah. That's how we do it. So until next time, hey, Say it with me now. Say it with me. Happy gaming.